Hello Booktube, it's Roz and um, I'm not in my usual place for recording this and this is going to be a bit more impromptu than usual because I'm uh, just swiftly doing the um, a tag that is kind of flying around Booktube at the moment for about um, how we're all getting along um, during the coronavirus lockdown um, and yeah it seemed like a really nice thing to do and um, I saw it on Steve Donahue and then I went from there to the original tag on um, Poptimist and um, yeah it's kind of popping up all round and oh I've got it written down it's the coronavirus quarantine and coping tag and it's really a chance for us all to kind of just um, catch up with each other about how we're getting on in these strange times. So it's not really a book tag, it's like a people tag, um, although uh, undoubtedly I'm going to end up mentioning a few books because I just uh, can't not. Um, so first question is where are you and what do your immediate, immediate surroundings look like? So this is why um, I'm not in my usual spot because and um, this is going to be a bit more wobbly and strange than usual because I'm not using um, uh, like a little stand to, to keep the camera still, um, the phone still, because I wanted to show you where I am. So here I am and I'm um, on the top floor of my house in Brighton and I'm going to look out the window for you. So. This is the this is the view. And these are like the terraced houses where I live. And this is my back garden. Um yeah, so you get a bit of a picture and you can see the sea. Well, I hope that's worked. I shall find out later, won't I? Um, but now you know where, where I am and where my surroundings are. Because I live um, in a, a house, uh, like a Victorian house, um, in, um, in the city of Brighton. And um, these houses are like um, tall and thin. Um, classic Victorian terrace house, if you know them. And, um, yeah, which is not such a bad place to be um, for lockdown. Um you've seen I've got a lovely view all the way to the sea on the other side of the house which you can't see um, you can walk up to um, the beginning of the South Downs which is beautiful chalk hills um, that surround Brighton um, and yeah it's a little bit of a walk to get up there but it but 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 you can and um, the other good thing about having a tall thin house with four stories is that even though we've got four adults um, all kind of quarantined in this house or, or, or uh, at the moment um, we can kind of spread ourselves around a bit and boy that does help I think so I do feel very fortunate I guess is what I'm saying um, like like one of my nieces is in like a kind of little one bedroom flat with a toddler um, my brother in Paris is in a, a, a an apartment on the 30th floor um, and that means that he has to take the lift when he goes out and if there's other people in the lift it's really that's really problematic because you can't really like socially distance like you should and but it's really kind of um then you could wait for a long time for then then the, like the lift to come back when you're in a 30 30 floor block well in fact it's taller than 30 floors but he's on the 30th floor so yeah i feel lucky very lucky okay what's the most unusual or abnormal thing you've done because of this now um, I guess the thing that is feeling quite odd, well, there's a few things, aren't there? Not seeing friends is odd because um, I, I have a, a few like really good, like women friends really that are that I see fairly regularly. Um, the other thing that is really really odd is not doing park run. Now. Um, I don't know if you'll know what park run is, but basically every Saturday morning at nine o'clock, I go to my local park and I run for five kilometres um, with about 500 other people, all of which I basically know. I mean, I don't know all of them intimately, but we go and we run there every um, every Saturday morning at nine o'clock. It's like a timed run. Um, I help all kind of organise it. I love it. It gives a shape to my week and it keeps me fit. And it's so odd not doing that. In terms of actual different things that I'm doing um working from home and I know there's like a whole set of this is one of the odd things at the moment there's a whole set of people out there that 
really kind of can't do their job or have been laid off and are like bored and having to find things to do to keep themselves busy. I know people who are doing, you know, 1500 piece jigsaws or, you know, taking up knitting or whatever. And then there's other people who are like really, really busy and working really hard and who's, um, uh, yeah, life is kind of almost busier than usual but just more curtailed physically and sadly I'm one of those um, and I don't want to moan about it because I love the charity that I work for and it's brilliant and we're doing a good job of trying to support people and everyone who's able to work in the organisation is absolutely being stalwart and doing their best but um, other people can't because they're carers because we're a disability charity and, and you know have like yeah we've had to furlough some people and up oh, it so it, it, it it's it's not so easy um so that's unusual because i'm working even more than usual and also if i never do another zoom meeting in my entire life after this is over i will be so happy um I know everyone's saying, oh, it's great. We're finding out that we can work really effectively from home. And it's true. And Zoom, the, the meetings, oh, so it's really good being able to see people and chat, you know, face to face. It's a really useful tool. But if you spend a whole day doing them, it's so tiring. Um, yeah. OK, moan over, moan over. Um, what's your coping mechanism? Well, I have a few. One is that the, um, my lovely family. Um, another is, oh, I will show you. Oh, again. There we go. Hello, coping mechanism. Yeah. Yep, that's my very elderly but adorable cat um, who helps um, keep us cheerful. Um, I'm doing um, online yoga twice a week. Um, I used to do a, a, a in-person yoga class um, <laughs> until this started and my lovely yoga teacher is um, doing it twice a week on Zoom and that is my, that's like a highlight of the week. Um, and I'm trying to get out and run um, which is really important for keeping me sane so um, that's another coping mechanism. Can you name something that is giving you pleasure? Well, one thing that's giving me pleasure is um, I'm actually making more use of my garden than I ever have before. I, I showed you it um, earlier and it's it's very little, my garden. It, it, there's nothing kind of big or exciting about it, but I'm really appreciating it. And when I, I'm sitting out in the sunshine and reading and it's a huge pleasure that we've had some like really nice, we've been so lucky here in the UK, we've had some really nice weather all, all the way through the lockdown really and, and so that's been giving me pleasure. Um, I'm also like stopping and appreciating nature this spring um, even more than I usually would and um, when I get to walk up um, to the downs as I said which I can do from from the house um, I can get to a local Iron Age hill fort and there's like cowslips and or yesterday I went walking there and I found the first orchids of the year um, early purple orchids oh, beautiful um, been to look at the, the bluebells in 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 the woods and yeah that's a real pleasure um, I'm also getting a lot of pleasure from reading again oh, I was really scared at the beginning of the lockdown period because I found that I was having a real trouble reading. I couldn't focus and um, I was just horrified. I was thinking, God, if I've got to get through this, this sad and difficult time without being able to enjoy books, I am in trouble. Fortunately, it soon came back. What I realised is I just need to pick the right kind of books. Um, so one pleasure that I've had, oh, I'll grab this, is reading a bit of poetry. And it's interesting because, like, I was thinking, oh, my attention span is poor at the moment, which is actually um, a well-known kind of, like, side effect of stress. So, you know, we shouldn't be surprised. Um, and, like, a book like this, Shane Haney, The Hall Lantern, you know, they're quite... They're not, like, easy poems. Do you know what I mean? You know, they, they involve a bit of kind of focus and concentration, but they're in little short jumps, aren't they? Little short batches. So like if I'm having a really busy working day, but I can go and make myself a cup of tea and read just one poem. And it's like making myself stop and breathe. So that's a pleasure. Um, 
I also have been perhaps reading slightly different things to what I normally would. Um, and oh, so here's an example. Now then, this is Tracy Thorne, Bedsit Disco Queen. Now, if you were my kind of age and you're from the UK, but maybe also the States, I don't know, they, they did make it over there. There was a band called Everything But The Girl and uh, Tracy Thorne was like the lead, the, well, she was half of the band. It was her and her partner, Ben Watts. And um, just reading that, her memoir, was really nostalgic and it just took me right out of myself because I was taken back to music that I really enjoyed and, and she was kind of growing up at the same time as me so it's not only the music of the band that she's in but also the music she enjoyed you know as a teenager and so on and so that was like a really good choice and I would never have guessed that that was like the right thing to read at the moment so those are some of the pleasures and then um the last question is, what is something you feel will never be the same again after this? Now, I've seen some answers to this that kind of suggest that things are going to be very, very different forever after this. Now, I do think that this is not going to be over quickly. Um, this is quite a long haul and although we will be in a place where we start to be able to go out and mix again to some extent essentially I think we're going to be like physically distancing and uh, very much affected by this for quite a long time to come so but having said that human beings have this enormous capacity to kind of get used to a new normal and I think that a lot of things will settle down and return to a kind of normal um, I think maybe a load more people will realise that they can work from home um, I think certain um, parts of the economy are going to be absolutely hammered like you know restaurant trade you know uh, preschools and nurseries are getting really um or loads of them are going to go out of business there's all sorts of strange things that are going to like really suffer um but i think that people will revert to normal behavior when they get the opportunity perhaps more than we might think and we'll look back on this these couple of years as this sort of aberration i don't know i may be wrong um Anyway, I hope that you're all coping out there, okay? And um, if, you, if you're if you a, a booktuber who has a channel, um, why not do this um, uh, do this tag um, in kind of solidarity with each other? And if you're a commenter and you don't have a channel, put your answers down, down below in the comments because um, it'd be really nice to know how people are getting by. Okay, bye.